Now, on this channel, we recently talked about the 747-8. Yeah, the most modern and the biggest 747 that ever came out. And what I also found out about this plane is that it has some very interesting short runway capabilities. Yes, we were able to operate this plane on pretty short runways. And in general, we can see the 747 operate at some interesting airports in real life. You know, the 747 that used to fly into St. Martin. That was also pretty impressive. They only have a barely 2,000 meter runway, which is not very long. So yeah, compared to other planes of this huge, huge size, this plane is very, very versatile when it comes to runway use. And you know, I like operating planes on very short runways, so let's do that today. Let's figure out how much runway this plane really needs. You know, let's fly this plane to places that we have checked out on the channel before. And at all of these airports, I haven't tried the 747 before, so this can be pretty interesting. Yes, we haven't really talked about the 747 in general on this channel in the past, but that's gotta change now. Yeah, we are somewhere in the desert of California outside of Los Angeles. And here in the desert, we have a lot of space. And basically what I did here was I built several runways of specific size. Let's find out what the shortest runway is that the 747 can take off and land from. Now, obviously, I will prioritize being able to take off on a runway rather than to land on it. Because, you know, you need a longer runway to take off than to land. And after that, let's do some practical flying at airports that we have checked out before on this channel. And let me tell you, there's a lot of them. <laughs> so this is going to be interesting. All right, let's just start our first runway test. Let's try if this plane can operate on this runway. I'm 100% sure that it will. This runway is 3,300 meters long, which is around 11,000 feet or so. Pretty normal runway size for a huge international airport. This shouldn't be an issue. I don't know what's the point of trying this, but you know, it's just for demonstration purposes. All right, looking good. Look how fast this plane is able to accelerate. This really went by pretty fast. There we go. We're off the runway and we didn't even use like half of it. So that's pretty cool. All right, that's it. Let's move on. You know what? Let's just actually skip the next two runways and just go for this one, which is a lot shorter. You know, between this one and this one, there's pretty much no difference. So let's just try this one. Now that one is a little bit on the tougher side. 2,300 meters. Yeah, I don't think that this will be a genuine challenge or anything. I mean, yes, in real life, we can definitely see 747s operate on runways as short as this one. You know, again, especially if we talk about airports like Princess Juliana in the Caribbean. But let's just go ahead and fly this plane out of here. You know, it shouldn't be that much of an issue. Yeah, this is quite a bumpy runway. Probably the wrong terrain for runways, but whatever. All right, there we are. No worries at all. We didn't even use half of the runway again. That was really no takeoff distance at all. Very impressive. So we can definitely move on to the next runway way, right? Alright, so the next runway is a bit shorter, 1500 feet. Yeah, 1500 is definitely too short for any international airport runway, really. But let's see, maybe this will work. Boom! Jesus Christ, this was really no issue at all either. Actually, this time around, we took off from the other side and we actually had the slope, which actually made our takeoff distance even worse. But still, the 747 did not fight at all. That was very far from an overrun. Still, I'm impressed by this plane. 1500 feet runway, no worries. Right, next runway is 900 meters long. So this is not a long runway, definitely not. So yeah, this can be interesting in the 747. I'm pretty sure this time around we will overrun, but I guess we'll find out. All right, full power again. And we are accelerating quickly. Jesus Christ. This is very impressive. I mean, we're, we are at 3,000 feet right now of elevation, which should make taking off even harder, but no worries at all. Jesus. 900 meters, no worries for this plane. This is quite tough. All right, this is pretty crazy. I guess we'll move on to the next runway with only 648 meters of runway. Um, what's the chance of us making it? Not very high, I guess. And let's actually push back a little with our reverse thrust because we'll need the whole runway, definitely. I don't know. Either the 747-8 is crazy strong or the simulator is not very realistic. That could also be. Why did the speed brakes come out? That was not supposed to be. I mean, you know, technically this was an overrun, but in real life, I think the plane would have not crashed. 
You know, that was really not bad either, was it? Alright, now we're getting genuinely ridiculous 400 meters off runway. Let me tell you, the shortest commercial runway is of that length. Alright, let's just go ahead and take off. It'll probably not work, right? Yeah, okay. Alright, now we have gone too far. But still, pretty impressive, wasn't it? Now, you know what, let's do some practical flying though, because, you know, these numbers don't really mean anything. But it does show that the 747 doesn't need a long runway. It is pretty versatile, let's uh, try something like... Santos Dumont Airport. Yeah, we have talked about that airport on this channel before. This is the one in Rio de Janeiro. Really nice airport, actually. It does have a pretty short runway. Alright, here we are, approaching Santos Dumont Airport. Alright, cable ahead, we have to avoid that one. Yeah, this is not how you approach this airport. This is pretty damn challenging, actually. You know, you actually have to make a very steep turn here in order to, well, avoid the mountain. You should definitely check out that video I made about it, like a month ago. Let's actually land on the smaller of the two runways. Alright. Yeah, the stopping distance of the 747 is ridiculously low. We landed at around 150 knots, which is quite a bit. We were pretty fast on the landing, but we still didn't use that much of this very short runway. Very impressive plane. You know, that was really not an ideal landing for such a short runway. Uh, now, you know, let's just go ahead and travel all around the world. Let's go to um, Iceland. Yeah, a few months ago I made a video about operating planes in Iceland and how challenging it is. Alright, here we are. This is quite an interesting approach, Jesus Christ. As you can see, the runway is down here. And yeah, this is quite a short runway, but I think we will make it, actually. Looking good, no worries, actually. Looking all good. That was smooth as butter. And here we go, we have actually stopped as well. This was pretty damn good. Look at the landing. That really went well, didn't it? There we go. And a perfect stop as well. But for some reason, the sound is gone. I don't know. Alright, so let's go a lot shorter. Let's go to Svolveir... I don't know how to say that airport. It is somewhere in Norway. I think this was from the video, Why You Don't Want To Fly In Scandinavia or something. But yeah, so far I'm blown away by what the 747 is actually capable of. This is actually a 950 meter runway. I think the biggest plane that I was able to stop here before was the 737 or something. Let's see if the 747-8 can also operate here. Alright, this will be a little bit uh, on the firm side. Alright. Oh wow, I haven't stopped that quickly in years. Alright, so I, I had a little magic trick up my sleeve. You know, in an aircraft like this, we have a few ways to brake. I mean, obviously, we have the normal brakes on the landing gear, and we have the reverse thrust. Yeah, all of these four engines are working hard to push air forward to help the aircraft stop. We obviously have the spoilers as well, the speed brakes, and something else I did was I put in some elevator input. So as you can see, I pulled up a bit so that the elevator surface also acts as a speed brake. And this made us stop even quicker. We used half of this 950 meter runway. Isn't this ridiculous? I mean, the plane is half as big as the runway. Now, you know what? Let's just go even more south. Let's not try the very infamous airport of Courchevel yet, it only has a 500 meter runway, it's very crazy. Let's actually go to an airport that is a little bit easier. Let's go to Zanen, which is in western Switzerland. Pretty short runway, actually. And we're in the Alps, so we have less air density, which doesn't make it easier, at least to take off. You know, because the plane has less air to work with, obviously. Yeah, actually, on this channel, we haven't been to this airport before, but as you can see, it is special nonetheless. I was at this place in real life, by the way, let me just mention that. Alright, fine enough. And again, I am just blown away by the performance of this aircraft. It turns out airliners don't need that much of a long runway, do they? That is very amazing, definitely. Um, you know what, I think we should try Courchevel now. Ouch. Oh no. Alright, that was a crash actually this time around. I mean, obviously, this plane is half as long as, like, genuinely the runway. So how is this supposed to work, right? Let's try the very infamous and legendary airport of St. Barthélemy, which is actually in Hull Island. It has one of the coolest airports I have ever seen, really. 
600 meters of runway. This can get interesting. All right, let's do this one more time. Let's just try stopping somehow, which basically means we have to stall this plane onto the runway. There we go. That was absolutely beautiful. Again, without sound for some reason. I am, again, very much impressed by this. Look at the dust that we left behind. I think we did touch down on the beach technically, but who cares? Yeah, the plane has probably got to go through maintenance. Ouch, that was a hard landing and even a bounce, but we still managed to stop somehow, which is absolutely amazing. That was pretty damn good. So all in all, we can say this plane is amazing when it comes to short field operation capabilities. Oh, we hit the wing, we hit the wing, and now the ocean. All right, this didn't work out, but still, this plane is amazing. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video, and I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.